Hi everybody, it's David from Doctors of Running, and today we have a fun episode. Hyperice was nice enough to send us some product to take a look at how the vibration and percussion therapy help out with therapeutic services and with performance. The video today, though, is a little bit unique. We're not going to be looking at the review of the Hyperice products themselves, per se. We're going to be looking more at vibration and percussion therapy as a whole, what that means for the consumer and the athlete, and what that means for a physical therapist, athletic trainer, massage therapist, etc., etc. So I think one thing to denote um, right off the bat, although Hyperice did provide us with some product, all of these thoughts are my own. Um, there are no conflicts of interest in terms of monetary supply or anything like that. They did not pay us to make this video. Um, we're just trying to simply get some information out there, see what's working, what are the voids and how we can make things better. So what I'll start off with is some of the data provided in terms of a difference between vibration and percussion therapy. A lot of times in the research, the words are used interchangeably. And for the sake of this conversation, they might be as well. However, a nuance to it, vibration is usually looked at as less than 50 hertz um, as far as the oscillations of this guy moving per second there in terms of contact. And greater than that is more percussion. And so the difference is mainly that vibration is a little bit more in the superficial layers of things, usually a little bit more down regulatory for the nervous system. Percussion tends to be a little bit deeper, higher frequencies, and also creates a little bit more of an excitatory response for that nervous system. So it really wakes things up. And so one thing that has been found is that this does seem to have effects on neuromuscular receptors like the Pacinian corpuscles um, and other mechanoreceptors as well. We have all kinds of different kinds of receptors, light touch, deep touch, sharp dull, and the ones responsible for vibration, percussion, things like that. And so do the massage guns work? Hyperice Products, Theragun, any of the other companies out there, Tim Tam? The short answer is yes, but they, are, they in themselves are not magical tools. They seem to help with augmenting routines and warm-ups and things like that. If you look at it in isolation with doing nothing versus using the product, they do seem to have some effects both at the neuromuscular standpoint, but also in the physiological standpoint. Um, I think more work needs to be done in terms of looking at dynamic warmups or the use of the intervention of the hyperice product and um, the outcome that we're looking to achieve, especially in the therapeutic realm. But we're going to take a look at all of that in a second here. I just want to do a quick literature review. Um, nothing too extensive. There's a whole lot of studies, but just some of the things that did show up in within the research pretty commonly. Um, one of the things that we did see across the board, whether it was the upper trapezius or the gluteus medius or piriformis, hamstrings, quads, um, I've been seeing that there has been a decrease in intrinsic muscular stiffness. And so they use a device called the Biomed that basically creates a little pulse on that muscle and then gives feedback to the machine and tells you on the inside how tense is that muscle at rest. And it does appear that there are some effects on making the musculature intrinsically a little bit less tensile. Um, other things that we've seen is there has been some signs uh, that delayed onset muscle soreness of DOMS has been reduced if used immediately after the activity. Um, the protocols on some of these studies have been a little wishy-washy on some of them, whereas it may be like using the delayed using the hyperice product immediately after exercise versus traditional foam rolling and nothing at all checking 24 48 hours 72 hours but it does seem to show that 48 hours some of those inflammatory markers like creatine kinase and some other things are a little bit lower so that's good to see we have some physiological effects on the recovery side of things on the neuromuscular side of things they haven't really seen much changes in proprioception. That's a fancy word for saying your joint's awareness of where it is in space. So if you close your eyes, put your hand out here, you know where your hand is. You kind of have an idea of what it's doing. The correlation to that with a runner is that you're running on a trail, you're doing all kinds of things, you're on unstable surfaces, and you, you kind of naturally know where your feet are in space. 
And so that hasn't really shown to have much changes in proprioception. Doesn't really show much changes in maximum strength acutely in terms of pushing. I would expect that. I, I wouldn't expect you doing a little bit of vibration on the muscles would change your strength right away. But one thing that I did notice that I thought was interesting and something that I saw in the research pretty continuously is that acutely muscular endurance does appear to be improving a little bit and whether or not it's due to oxygenation of the tissue, more of that excitatory response I was talking about earlier, it's hard to say, but whether it was in a geriatric population with get up and go tests or um, sitting and standing for 30 seconds, um, they had Taekwondo athletes doing a kicking index, looking at the amount that they can do uh, within a given time frame, they were showing improvements and same thing with another test, whether a series of isometrics um, where the muscle is not elongating. So they have a force plate essentially that they're pushing into on both ends, pushing and pulling with their quadriceps and hamstrings and show that there was decreased hamstring fatigue. So I think that's interesting. Uh, range of motion changes do appear to be sometimes effective, sometimes not. The literature does seem to be about 50-50 on that one. But one thing I've noticed is that it does appear to be relatively helpful in the posterior chain for that. I, I'm not 100% sure why on that factor, but we, as a society, everything does seem to be in front of us. We do tend to be a little bit inhibited on the posterior chain. What I mean by that, the backside of our body, our glutes, our hamstrings, our calves, our periscapular musculature, our rhomboids, rotator cuff muscles, things like that. And so it does seem to have improvements acutely in range of motion in, say, the hamstrings, in the calves, in the periscapular musculature. One of the studies did show improvements with range of motion into adduction horizontally as well as internal rotation. Um, however, that was compared to not doing anything at all. So you can take what you will with that. But it does appear that there are some changes I think where some of the voids in the research are is mainly taking a look at those variables and where we can fine tune things because some of the studies, it shows that the intervention of said hyperized products, normally the Viper, which is a foam roller with vibration and the Hypervolt. Um, I didn't really see any with the hyper ice um, hypersphere here. But we can all imply they all have their own frequencies, three different sets of frequencies, some below 50, some over 50. So some of the things I talked about earlier, depending on the response you're trying to elicit, you can use them for those uses. Um, but the research doesn't always, the methodology doesn't always seem to be super sound. And it's hard. You can do good science, but if the variables don't, answer a greater question sometimes the applicability can kind of come down with the specificity and so looking at some of the sports studies um, a lot of them are looking at isometric strength a lot of them are looking at like say a sit and reach test things like that um, one of them did look at a hexagonal test with the taekwondo athletes i believe but i think i would like to see the research as far as a direction go is looking at some of those more functional tests that we use in the field. So something like an intermittent yo-yo test, a 40-yard dash, um, even if it's like a frog jump, squat jump, box jump, uh, long jump, high jump, depending on the athlete, what may work for them. A T-test, working on agility, going forward, going left, right. How are they with lateral movements and things like that? And seeing whether or not there's a relationship there. Um, aside from looking at static measurements that may be a little bit easier to measure and standardize in the lab, but the correlation doesn't exactly move on to the field. So those are some of the things within the research I would like to see moving forward. From a therapeutic standpoint, some of the research has looked at more, does this work compared to nothing at all? And I would like to see more exchange between known manual therapy um, interventions such as joint mobilizations, trigger point release, soft tissue mobilization, mobilization with movement, things like that, and then stack it up and see whether or not that actually has a relationship or whether or not it's more or less and, and see where hyper ice stacks up. But what I would like to say is it does seem like it's having some effect on it. And to be honest, I do use these tools in the clinic 
notice I use the word tools, everything that we talk about, they're all tools in the tool belt here. I don't have anybody that comes in and I just say, let me take this hypervolt product and do it along your back, do it along your glutes. Okay, you're healed. We don't need to do anything else. But it, what it can do is augment the process. And so people may be fine tuned to certain different kinds of receptors, whether or not it's light pressure, deep pressure, vibration. Everyone has a different relationship with pain and discomfort, and maybe they might not have any pain at all, but we're looking at trying to create a mechanical change in terms of tissue length and things like that. And it can help open that window to get us a little bit further and then work on those things. Where that comes into play as far as sports goes is in that warm up. And so one of the problems that I had with the studies that were going through was that they would take a look at three different variables and they would basically, A would be like a general warm up, like you're jogging. B would be, okay, you're doing jogging and you're looking at some dynamic stretching. C would be you're jogging, doing some dynamic stretching, and you're incorporating a hyper ice product. Um, and the result would be that the intervention of C versus A is significantly improved. I would expect that. So I think some of the studies might need to improve on some of the methodology and look and ask some bigger questions compared to different kinds of dynamic stretching, what you're trying to elicit in terms of a physiological response and things like that. I will say these aren't exactly hyper sponsored studies too. I do want to get that disclaimer out there. These are third-party studies being done by universities, students, PhDs, whatever. Like People are creating studies and doing what they should and they're trying to expand research and sometimes good research numerically doesn't always compare to field experience. And that's a really difficult aspect when it comes to therapeutic research and sport research specifically. But I would like to see that gap bridged a little bit. Um, what I will say though, is it does seem that there are some effects happening physiologically. And so I personally still need to do a little bit more anecdotal research on myself, incorporating it into warmups. Um, but it may be nice to have on the track or in the car before a trail race or something like that. Do a general warm up, do your drills, do your strides, use it for a little bit on the quads, the calves, the hamstrings, glutes, get everything fired up and then go run. I'd be curious to see whether or not that has any effect on performance, especially say in things like the middle distance where there may be a little bit more of an acute muscular endurance factor. Um, same goes for other sports. If you're watching this and you're not a runner, obviously we are the Doctors of Running podcast, but one popular thing you see, it, it's in Major League Baseball, it's in NBA, they're advertising it in a lot of different places. And so basically taking a look at the demand of your sport, the demand of what you're wanting to do. So if you need mobility, you're a baseball pitcher, maybe it might be wise to do it a little bit on the posterior cuff there, really loosen it up help improve that external rotation so that you can sling that shoulder forward or you can wake up post your rotator cuff things like that and just incorporate it as a piece of the warm-up but not necessarily the whole thing so my conclusion on all of this is that again it is a tool just like anything else it is an adjunct to what we are already doing as athletes so please do your warm-up do your sport specific drills and then if you choose to incorporate some of these products, it does appear that there may be some beneficial effects. Um, whether or not they are significantly beneficial, that does seem like that may depend on the person. Um, some of the studies have had some, like some flip-flops. I mean, some people are person dependent and what may be less than 50 hertz may still be excitatory for other people. So. Some of the frequency relationships have also shown to have some fluctuation amongst different populations. So a lot of it is person dependent and just play around with these things. But we just wanted to put that information out there. Um, again, we want to thank Hyperice for giving us some demo products here and trying them out. So we have the Hypersphere here, I believe retail. I don't want to get any numbers wrong here. So I, I'm not going to release those numbers, but I want to say everything is somewhere between 150 and 250, depending on the product. I know this one's right around 200, um, the Hypervolt Go. This is the Viper 3. 
So a foam roller with vibration, trigger point ball with vibration, massage gun, vibration, percussion, different kinds of heads, things like that. So if you like the video, please subscribe to Doctors of Running. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. So we probably got a TikTok. I don't even know at this point. Shout out, Bach, you're doing a great job over <laughs> getting everything out and having a platform for us to spread things. Um, he's our social media wizard. But um, yeah, if you have any questions or if there's anything that I missed, anything that you guys want me to incorporate or answer on, um, more than happy to answer some questions. Just drop them down in the comments. Again, if you like the video, please subscribe and check us out at doctorsofrunning.com.